Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We're on day one of the NLP coach certification and training series. And in the moments ahead, I'm gonna be sharing with you a very important video. Because for new coaches out there, they don't know what coaching is. They don't understand what it looks like from the inside. So many people around the world say to me, Daniel, I don't want to do coaching and I don't want to go to one of those trainings where there's a lot of rah-rah, where you got to jump up and down. We don't want to do that. We want strategic coaching. We want you to be able to help us rewire our brain so that we can think differently. Now, if you're interested in becoming a coach, then what you have to realize is that coaching is a mental interaction. As the coach, you ask very well thought out questions. These questions enable your client to go very deep into their unconscious mind and consider everything that they've done in the past, but also to be able to reconsider it and think about it differently. See, one of the biggest things that business people are held back by is a series of mental and emotional blockages. And the way that we rewire the mind is through our language. So neuro-linguistic programming, language, the language that we use programs our mind and our body, our nervous system. And for us to change that programming in the way that we think and feel, we have to ask ourselves a new set of questions. These questions are linguistic. It's not about jumping up and down. It's not about fireworks and lightning and bright colors flashing around the room. It's about thinking differently. And the way we think differently is to ask better questions. So in the moments ahead, I'm gonna show you a coaching demonstration with my client, Jody, and I'll show you what we do inside of a coaching session. So enjoy the video and I'll see you in just a moment. It's conversational. You are not Tony Robbins. You're not banging the drumsticks for them. There's no flashing lights and fireworks. You're humans, you're friends. I don't do any backflips for you, do I? Tell you some weird... Yeah, yeah. Not yet. <laughs> we talk, we ask good questions, we leave, we go off the path for a while, we come back on, but we always get to where we should be by the end of each session. And it's not an interrogation. Jody, what sense are you most aware of? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a dictatorship. It's a conversation. So as we go through, we always pre-frame it. So in today's session, Jody, what I want to do is just to ask a couple of questions to get a better understanding of how your mind works. That's the title of one of my books, by the way. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. So we always want to get permission because once we get permission, they've said yes. But if we force these questions down their neck and demand a response, what happens is they say, I don't like this. It's not comfortable. I don't want to play this game. So we've got to pre-frame it. So during today's session, I'm going to go through some questions and these are based on the NLP communication model. And because of the NLP communication model, we can better understand what's happening inside of your mind, which means we can help you get to your goal faster and easier. Would that be okay? Absolutely. She's smiling. <laughs> if the client's going like this, then the meaning of the communication is the response that you get. And you want to ask another question. So we'll probably be here for about 10 or 15 minutes. And some of these things that you might really need to think through. Where the other ones you'll just know from the top of your mind. So, are you ready? ready? Good, okay. Out of your senses, out of sight, out of sound, out of feelings, out of taste, out of smell, which sense do you believe you're most aware of? Sight. Sight, cool. And what external events tend to trigger you positively? Maybe it's something that you see. What do you see that triggers you positively? Um, the beauty in the, things. Okay. Could you give me an example? The beach. Ah, <laughs> in Costa Rica? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sunset. <laughs> Good. Beach and sunset. Lovely. So everything that we get from our client, we can utilize later on inside of a metaphor. So we can't tell a metaphor unless we understand what's happening inside of their world. So what external events trigger you negatively? What things happen that really, can we say it, piss you off? Um, rude people. Rude people. And, and, and how do you determine rude? How do you classify rude? Uh, if I feel that they mistreat me. Mm. Anything else? 
um, I guess a part of the way that they project themselves as well. Mm -hmm. Could you give me an example? Well, I tend to smile when I see people, and if mm -hmm. they don't return it, then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't. Can I tell you a story? So in coaching, you can always break off into a metaphor. Do I always break off in a little story when we coach? So I went to Korea, and I was in Korea, and I was smiling. I was walking around saying, An Yong Seo, <laughs> smiling, and people just stared at me. And I go to the next shop, An Yong Seo, smile on, I got nice teeth. I was smiling, I want to show them my teeth, because that's what we do, isn't it? We smile to show people that I accept you. And they just stared at me. I said to Nini, I said, these fucking people, I'm walking around <laughs> smiling, saying An Yong Seo, being polite in their language, and they're all being so bloody rude. I said, I don't think I like Korea. She said, what are you doing? I said, I'm walking in there, smiling and saying, An Yong So. She goes, why are you smiling at them? Do you want them to die? <laughs> and I said, I don't want them to die. She said, well, why are you showing them your teeth? <laughs> now, what I figured out is in Korea, is if you smile at somebody and you show them your teeth, this represents bones. And bones equal death. Anyway, I just went off a tangent. <laughs> I'll remember that one. you remember that one. <laughs> Do you think I'm installing and embedding some new knowledge at the same time? Mm -hmm. Because you've got a friend who lived in Korea. Absolutely. Wouldn't it be useful if you're walking around going, and young sayo, and then saying to <laughs> Vanessa, man, they're so rude. Yeah. So can you smile without showing the teeth? Is that what You can try. <laughs> <laughs> so in your life right now, what are you choosing to delete? My bad health. Your bad health. Okay. Is that, is, that, is that a good thing for you? Absolutely. Oh. So see how we want to check in? So what could we hear on the surface? Could be, I'm deleting my bad health, but because we know each other, it's a good thing. But I want to check in. Excellent. And what do you currently distort in your life? What do you blow out of proportion? Um, probably the relationships. Okay. What do you tend to do? Sabotage. Mm. <laughs> How do you sabotage? Um, usually through uh, being not finding them trustworthy. Mm. So we take notes as we go. Always taking notes. See, when you write it down, it's a psycho neuromotor activity. I'm embedding her story into my subconscious mind. And people always ask me, How do you remember that? Because I'm always taking notes. I write down everything. Consciously, if you don't write it down, within 10 minutes, you lose the memory. You can retrieve it, but it's hard. So you're better off to write it down as you're going through it. So what do you currently generalize in your life? But let me give you an example. When I was cabin crew, I'd meet these lovely girls and they'd say, Daniel, all the good guys are taken. And I'm standing there, I'm going, man, I'm single. I'm not taken, I'm single. Then they'd say, well, you must be gay. I say, I'm neither gay and I'm available. But they generalized me. And that was their belief. All men are cheats. And if they weren't cheats, they were gay. But I was single. And then when they would fly with my wife, they'd say, oh, beautiful ring. Are you married? And she'd say, yes. And I'd see the size of the rock. And they'd go, is he a captain? <laughs> and she'd say, no. I'd say, is he a first officer? And they should say, no. And then they'd go, is he a senior? And she'd say, no. And they'd start to shrink and be like, is he business class? And she'd say, no, he's a economy class. And they'd go, oh, you married at an economy class crew? And it was a generalization. So what are you generalizing in your life? Probably your example right there. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So see how we sometimes have to lead with the question. We've got to soften it up with an anecdote or a story. And that's what coaching is. Now, what attitudes do you have that empower you? Because you're incredibly successful. What are those attitudes that you have that empower you? Um, it's the positivity, I think. Positivity, okay. How do you be positive? How do you do it? Um, just tell myself that every day is a good one. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. And what attitudes do you have that hold you back? Um, probably self-limiting beliefs mm. 
And there, is there one that you'd like to share? Um, probably guilt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how does guilt sabotage your success and how does it limit you? I think sometimes that, um, that I feel guilty for being successful in some ways and um, not, not others not being the same. Mm -hmm. So what we'll learn uh, tomorrow is we're going to learn the different five different types of guilt. And this is often called survivor guilt. That we become more successful than somebody else and we feel guilt mm -hmm. because you've worked hard, haven't you? You've worked in extreme conditions, long hours away from home, <coughs> whilst other people probably didn't do a tenth of what you did. Probably not. Kind of doesn't make sense, does it? No. <laughs> but we still feel guilty. So we've got to detach the guilt. So what attitudes do you need to have over the next three days to have your success breakthrough? Um, not feeling guilt, for starters. <laughs> good, good. Uh, to remain positive again. Anything else? Not off the top of my head. Good, excellent. What about off the bottom of your head? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here a long time. <laughs> So what beliefs do you have that empower you? What's a belief that you have about yourself that when you think that belief, you feel strong and powerful? Um, that, that I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable, excellent. And what self-limiting beliefs do you have that hold you back? What's another one? Um, probably that I'm not good enough. Mm. One of the things you'll find with self-limiting beliefs People know their self-limiting beliefs and they're very easy to admit to. So when we ask them, what are those ones that hold you back? They'll give you a couple. Then if you were to go deeper, which we won't today, we'll do it on another day, we can keep going deeper and we'll get a whole list of them. And as the coach, I sit there and write them down through my 160 pages, write them down. So what beliefs do you need to have to have your success breakthrough? Um, I need to believe in myself. Mm. Do you think she's the only one here who needs to believe in themselves more? No. Or do you think that could be all of us? Yeah. So perception is projection. What will happen in a coaching session, your client will say to you, I need to believe in myself more. If you haven't solved that inside of yourself, it will be very hard for your client to solve because you'll say, you can do it, <laughs> you can do it. And internally, you'll say to yourself, I've never done it. I never did it. So this is why we have the success breakthrough, to increase your level of belief in yourself and you can help your clients. There's an old saying that you can't get rich working for a poor boss. You can't give what you don't have. If I don't have belief that these tools work, how can I help anybody else? Fair to say? Imagine I'm a PT, I've totally lost control of my body and my weight how could I convince somebody to join my PT program and feel congruent about it? It'd be tough, wouldn't it? It would be. So what decisions have you made in the past that empower you? Um, to pay a house and task. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And what self-limiting decisions have you made in the past that hold you back? And you mentioned about relationships before. So what are the limiting decisions you've made about men? that I don't trust them. <laughs> mm. See, you can help your client along the way by remembering what they say. Now, what new decisions do you need to have at the success breakthrough to have a more loving and deeper relationship? That I should give people the benefit of the doubt off the start. Mm. Yeah, excellent. And what memories do you have that empower you? Something in the past that you think about it and you go, you know what, if I can do that, I can do anything. Um, becoming where I'm at in my career right now, becoming an inspector Excellent. in a man's world. Mm. <laughs> imagine that against all odds. If you could do that, which is a big thing, just imagine how much further you can go. Go anywhere. Go anywhere. Excellent. And what's a memory that you have from the past that holds you back? Um, Probably just growing up in, in the situations, growing up on a farm, growing up with, you know, uh, an aggressive father. Mm -hmm. Excellent. 
Remember the old saying is, wherever you go, there you are. You take you wherever you go. They say, leave the baggage at the door. What happens? It comes in. It's emotional baggage. <laughs> so in order for us to become somebody else, we have to drop the emotional baggage. And that's why we have the success breakthrough. So what memories do you need to have to have your success breakthrough? Uh, the good, remember the good memories. Remember traveling and being at the beach, surfing. <laughs> good. Are you finding you know more about Jody already? So these questions, these are great for your success breakthrough. They're great to get to know your client at a deeper level, to understand where you need to take your client on the journey. It's not an interrogation. It's a flow. Ask a question, have a laugh, break off, tell a metaphor. Give her a little bit of useful information. Because when Jody goes to Korea, she'll say, you know what? I remember what he said. <laughs> <laughs> So you've got to constantly dance with your client. If they want to break off and tell you something else, listen into it. If it doesn't make sense, just bring them back on the path. It's a mental interaction. We're constantly building rapport and we're understanding how their mind works. So what I want you to do now is I want you to break off with a partner. So what will have to happen is you'll have to stand up, you'll have to move to another seat and find somebody. And I want you to spend about 10 minutes on this and I want you to go through and I want you to ask them some questions and I want you to write their answers down in their book and then tonight they'll complete the other answers okay so I just want you to get into that motion of sitting down with your client getting along with them and getting a feel for asking questions because if it's the first time you've done it it might feel a little bit awkward remember your first time it's a little bit awkward wasn't it <laughs> but as you do it more the better you get and now you can ride your bike down the street, <laughs> chewing gum, listening to your headphones saying, hey mum, what's going on? <laughs> but it was awkward the first time you hopped on that bike. So you've got to have some fun with them. Uh, I had a very good experience. Uh, went through a couple more breakthroughs, which were amazing and made me feel a lot lighter. Um, I learned that that I should like myself more and uh, to continue working on removing my self-limiting beliefs. Um, I can apply it to um, in the sense of to continue working on it and um, I think the more that I learn about it the more that I can help others. I would tell them that it is worth it and it'll be a life-changing experience uh, for the better for sure. <laughs>